Okay. Am I live? I think I am live. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Nasılsınız? Benim adım Gökberk. Türkçe öğretmeni Gökberk. Nasılsınız? İyi misiniz? So last week uh, I wasn't able to attend the live stream. I had a pretty bad throat so I wasn't able to speak clearly. So I had to postpone that lesson. But starting today, we will continue our YouTube live streams. So for now, there aren't many people. I'm going to wait a few minutes, maybe one minute or two minutes, uh, to have people join this live YouTube lesson. Okay, if you're in the lesson, if you're watching the lesson, please write me a comment in the chat box write me tell me about yourself or just simply say hello i'm from that that that city okay so i'm going to wait a few more minutes until some people come because i don't want to start the lesson without <laughs> any viewers last week we had some nice amount of viewers but this week uh, there doesn't seem to be that many viewers but Hopefully, even when this live lesson is over, uh, people still will watch this lesson, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, so while people are joining, I'm going to make some simple Turkish sentences using today's topic, present continuous tense in Turkish. So I'm going to speak in simple Turkish language. I'm going to use maybe some case markers, some vocabulary that you may or may not know. Merhaba. So I will make some example Turkish sentences before some people also join the lesson, okay? I will talk about what I did today in Turkish. Bugün saat 8'de uyandım. Sekiz buçukta kahvaltı yaptım. Sonra okula gittim. Şimdi e, bilgisayarda YouTube dersi yapıyorum. Sizinle konuşuyorum. Merhaba Agota. Merhaba. Nasılsın? Sizinle Türkçe konuşuyorum. Ve şimdi biraz su içiyorum. So I'm going to use a little bit of Turkish simple uh, present continuous. Okay? So in today's topic, we're going to do present continuous, the verb ing in Turkish. Some, some of you, most of you will know, but there are some rules that you need to be careful, careful about when you're making, when you're conjugating the verb in present continuous. For, like, for example, there is something called uh, vowel harmony, which you probably know if you're studying a little Turkish. You have to be careful uh, about the changes of vowel inside the verbs, right? Sometimes the e sound changes into the e sound. Merhaba Dimitris. Çok güzel, teşekkür ederim. Bugün şimdiki zaman. Present continuous çalışacağız. Şimdiki zaman ile cümleler kuracağız. Şimdiki zaman e, alıştırmalar yapacağız, okay? I think you're uh, joining our lesson for the first time. Dimitri Agota, thank you for joining. So if you have any questions, I will do this lesson mostly in English because uh, people watching this lesson won't know much Engle uh, Turkish. So I have to use a bit more English. But hopefully in the later lessons when I'm doing maybe intermediate Turkish, uh, I will speak less. English and more Turkish, okay? So, first, let's see, let's remember uh, how we made the present continuous tense, okay? So, I'm going to share my uh, Google Docs documents. Okay, so I changed uh, the background so that it's easier to see. I hope uh, everyone can see it easily. Bugün 27 Şubat 2022. Pazar saat 
19 0 5 okay so today is late so first of all let's remember how we made the present continuous tense right so the present continuous tense let's write present continuous tense or the verb ing in turkish the suffix for the present continuous tense was e your right so the e changes according to vowel harmony sometimes it's e sometimes it's u u u right then later we add the person marker so if your action is done by me i add a certain person marker uh, if it's done by somebody else the person marker changes that's one of the basics of turkish right so let's see first an image uh, of the present continuous conjugations okay so the conjugations for present continuous if you cannot see if there's any problems with the chart or if there's anything that you cannot see please write me in the chat box i keep on checking the chat box uh, so i tried to make this more better than last time so now you will be able to see it in more uh, there will be more space for you to see it clearly okay so let's continue present continuous tense is your right so present continuous tense is a four fold vowel harmony so what is a four fold vowel harmony so it basically means that uh, a suffix has four vowel variations. So as you can see from this chart, this "-ior suffix has four different variations. It's either the "-ior", "-ior", "-ior", or "-ior", as you can see from the ban, the I pronoun, right? So sometimes, uh, a vowel uh, a suffix has two uh, vowel uh, two fold vowel harmony for example the easiest one is the plural, plural suffix you know the suffix that we use when we want to make something plural when we want to make a noun plural which is the large large variation as you can see it's twofold but the present continuous is fourfold, right? Okay, let me just erase this for now. So one of the things that we have to be careful about is when we're making a, a present continuous conjugation, we have to be careful about the uh, stem verb, so the verb without any suffix, and we have to be careful about the last vowel, whether that verb ends in a consonant or a vowel so there are things that we have to be careful about okay so there's another chart that i uh, <laughs> copied from the book uh, so if you have this book it's i think uh, no not yediklim so not this, that one this is yabancı dilim Türkçe. this is the first book so as you can see uh, this is the basic conjugation of the verb gel mek merhaba andrew eh, it's okay don't worry uh, yeah so i don't know the time where each of you are from you know some of you may be still early so it's seven o'clock at night here in turkey <laughs> merhaba i mean so sometimes some of you may be in uh, maybe Pakistan or England or United States, I don't know, maybe in France or a completely different time zone. I tried to choose a time zone that suits that will suit both me and you, the people who are watching my students who are watching the lesson. Sorun değil, Amin. Okay, so let me continue with gelmek. So gelmek, as you can see, means to come but this verb has the infinitive suffix so when we're conjugating a verb into present continuous we first have to get rid of the infinitive suffix we have to write the verb in its root form 
So most of the time when you see in a dictionary, maybe you open a dictionary and you want to find a meaning to a verb, you may see the verb with the mek mak suffix. So the mek mak suffix. So this is the suffix for the infinitive, infinitive or sometimes called the dictionary form. Oops, not dic dictionary, <laughs> dictionary form. So we will also have a, a grammar topic for the infinitives uh, to say, I like doing this, I like to do that. But that's uh, in another lesson, hopefully. In this lesson, we're going to do something more basic. So the first thing that you have to do is put the verb in its stem form. So stem, or sometimes some other books call it the root. So you have to erase any kind of suffix added to a verb. So for galmek, we have to erase the mek suffix. Then the root form, root form for galmek is gal meaning come. OK, so now we are going to attach the positive present continuous uh, suffix. So there are different variations. As you can see from this chart, the positive is your, the negations, the negative sentences. We have an M letter, gel mi yorum. And for the questions, we have something called the question particle, uh, which is separately added. It's the mu suffix. And here in the questions, the person suffix is not after the your, the present continuous suffix, but after the question particle. We'll see that in a moment. Okay, so gel is now the root of the verb come. So when we're trying to correctly add uh, the your, the your variation, we first have to look at the last vowel, the a sound. And we also have to look at the last letter. So this verb, gel, ends in a consonant. So that's a good thing for us because uh, most of the time, a verb ending in a consonant is a lot easier to conjugate. There are uh, not many exceptions that you have to worry about. We will see some exceptions, but don't worry, OK? So I'm going to give you another chart. This is also from Yabanji Dilim Türkçe, the book. If you have this book, it's pretty nice. The exercises are nice. OK, so I'm going to move on to the next page. So I'm going to write the galmek again. So galmek ended in the E letter, and the last vowel is the le. So ünlü uyumu, here it says ünlü uyumu. It means uh, vowel harmony in Turkish. So that's the Turkish word for vowel harmony. Well, that's one of the most important things that you need to master when you're conjugating any kind of thing in Turkish. OK, so uh, I think most of you who are watching this lesson already know some of the basics. Maybe at least they learned what vowel harmony is, right? So according to uh, whether a vowel is a back or front vowel, we have to choose the suffix variation, which is also either back or front. So, gel. Okay, so can anyone tell me what is the A sound? Is it a back vowel or is it a front vowel? The A letter in Turkish. Is it a back vowel or is it a front vowel? Okay, so I'm going to ask before I move on. So I want to know if you all understand the difference between a back and a front vowel. So while I was doing a private lesson with one of my students who was beginning to learn Turkish, uh, I noticed that uh, he is from, by the way, England. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain that one second. So uh, my English student was accustomed to the sounds, to the vowels of English. So uh, if any of you know the International Phonetic Alphabet, so there aren't actually six or eight vowels. In Turkish, there are eight vowels. Uh, but, but actually, there aren't just eight vowel sounds. There are way more than them. So most people think, for example, the E sound, uh, according to, for example, English, 
is a back, eh, the English eh sound. It's back in English, but it's front in Turkish, right? So it's a bit different. So you have to be careful about the differences. So because it's uh, a front vowel, we have to choose the e. So as you can see from the table, it's for the e and the e sounds that have you know, that are in the uh, verb stem. We have to choose the e variation. So as Dimitri said, it's geli yorum. So by the way, Andrew said back. So Andrew, I'm guessing, is from an English-speaking country. So in English, or in American English, or any kind of English, the a uh sound is a back sound, because that's a different a uh than the e uh sound, as you can see. A, uh, e, uh, a, uh, e. Uh. So when you think about that sound in your, in your mother tongue's perspective, that's going to, yeah, I, I thought about that. Yeah, I knew, I knew that you could be English, and I was correct. So my student, Tom, was also English, and he said that, okay, the eh sound is a back sound. But in Turkish, it's a front sound. So this is a simple thing, but when you're adding the correct uh, vowel variations, then you're going to make a mistake. You're going to choose a back vowel variation or something else, and it's going to mess up the structure of the conjugated verb. So uh, if you are still having troubles, I would su suggest that you look at this. Uh, I posted in the comments uh, this free lesson on vowel harmony. Uh, it's the link to my website, and there's also a video lesson there. You can check out both the video lesson. It's a video lesson for speaking Turkish in 30 days, my free video lesson on this YouTube channel. It shows the different vowels, whether they're back or front. And I mean, it's important. It's not that hard, it's, but uh, you should master the differences. OK, so as you can see, a and e variation uh, is for the e or suffix. The a and u sound, the a and u, for example, if there was al, al means buy or receive, what would that be? If you want to add the ER. So, anyone? Uh, Dimitri. Dimit, Dimitris. How would we conjugate AL into present continuous? So, I'm going to quickly move on to this topic. Don't worry, we're going to do a lot of exercises in a moment. So, for AL, we first have to look at the vowel. It's the A sound. So, A in Turkish is a back vowel, a, a. So it's similar, a bit similar, maybe not that similar, but similar to the English a. So in English a, it's even further back. The Turkish a is more in the middle and more wide. The English a is a bit more, you know, uh, the, the mouth is not that open, but a in Turkish is more open, but they're still the same position. So Dimitri, it's alıyorum, right? So al, u, your, and finally the person mark. But this is basically the rule, and it's the same for, for example, it says kosh, meaning uh, run, because there's the o sound. It's kosh, u, your, um. But there is something uh, there's like an exception in turkish for example let's see one kind of exception uh, okay there's the verb söyle, meaning uh, not to say but say we can say sing a song koşuyorum right so how would you correctly conjugate the uh, söyle sound so how would we make söyle into present continuous? So now, if you look at the chart, you'll see maybe uh, two different letters. OK, so Dimitris, do you know the reason it's not söyleyorum? It is söyleyorum. This is not the correct one, right? 
the first there's the a sound so it's say liorum right so you wrote the uh one second that's so liorum sorry so most of you maybe some of you will say so liorum why because <laughs> there's the a sound here so according to the table it should be so liorum but uh, this is one of the exceptions, as Dimitris uh, correctly conjugated. Uh, there are two vowels, and this is a two-syllable word, two-syllable verb stem. So if we say so li, uh, and e, uh, and e. So uh, there is a bit of a difficulty when you try to say this verb conjugation in a fluent speech so uh is as you can see it's rounded rounded but e it's difficult for you to pronounce it in fluent speech that's why uh, in some verbs there are some con uh, exceptions so the closest sound to the uh sound will be the u sound instead so in Turkish, there are certain verbs, as you can see also from the say, uh, chart, the ö uh becomes ü. So in this verb, we don't focus on the last vowel here, the ä e sound, but actually we focus on the ö uh sound. So we ignore the ä e and it becomes ü instead. So there are certain verbs uh, that have this exception. You just have to simply memorize these verbs. You have no other choice but to memorize them. But the good thing about this is uh, there aren't that many uh, exceptions in Turkish. Most of the verbs follow, maybe 66, 70 percent of the verbs follow this vowel harmony rule. Maybe 30 percent, which you won't see that much, uh, have this exception. Okay. So when you see an exception, most of the time it's with verbs that have two vowels inside them so you have to see okay the first vowel is uh so the uh is a front rounded vowel but if i for example have the a sound and I want to add the present continuous oh it's going to be difficult so so it's it's not that uh, good in fluent speech so that's why we automatically change it to the closest uh, front rounded vowel and that's the uh sound okay okay so uh that's one second what was i going to look at okay let's move on to the next table one second so the negations are not that difficult so the negations are basically the m letter right we simply just add the m letter in front and the good thing about the negations is that they are not affected from this uh, that you act the exception that you saw for example if you want to say i am not saying can anyone say i'm not saying in turkish so would we would we still make it similar to the one that we just made for example it would would it be still so that miorum so it would be the e sound the a e sound the u sound can anyone correctly conjugate this okay so my friends which i cannot uh, read their name <laughs> so le miorum right also dimitris the reason for this is thanks to the consonant sound. So the consonant sound, uh, the negation letter, makes it so that we don't need to change any of these letters. Uh, Gohar, yeah, yeah, last lesson, last lesson. I also couldn't read your name and ask, and you also told me you're Gohar. Thank you again for joining Gohar. Okay, so for example, on lot explain uh, basically explain so can you also tell me i'm not explaining 
how would we say I'm not explaining? So do we explain? Well, yeah, simple mistake here again. How would we say I'm not explaining? Anyone? I'm taking a break while you're all trying to figure it out. So I'll ju just drink some water. So do we have to uh, be very about any vowel changes? I don't think so. So I'll just write it instead. Ah, unlat Dimitris and Gohar. Unlat Miorum. So as you can see, negations, negative sentences, are a lot easier than positive ones. So in positive ones, uh, you have to be, as you can see, careful about certain vowels. The A ah ending requires the U uh sound. The A eh ending requires the E sound, as you can see from this chart. By the way, I'm going to copy the link to this Google Docs. I actually copied it in my first or second live stream. The link was on the comment section, but I'm going to copy it again. Uh, so you can also take take a look at the notes that I'm writing, okay? So unlat mur, right? Okay. So finally, let's look at the questions, and after that, we're gonna do some exercises. Okay, one second. So the questions are pretty easy; they're not that hard. Uh, okay. So this is the my this is my chart from the present uh, for. This is my chart from the Speaking Turkish in 30 Days lesson in the present continuous lesson. As you can see, we have something called Evet, bu defa birincisin. Tebrik ediyorum Dimitris. So, it's nice to be the first in something, even if it's just a YouTube live stream. <laughs> so, the Turkish question marker. So, this is not the same as the question words that those are different. So the question marker is most of the time mu or me. So here, as you can see, the vowel variation for the question par mar uh, particle or the question marker is just one, but only for the onlar, the their pronoun, there is the mu variation. But that's just because it's the online. It's one of the exceptional uh, personal pronouns in Turkish. Okay, the rule for making question uh, sentences in the present continuous is it's uh, basically the positive present continuous conjugation, but we simply add the person marker after the question particle. And the person marker follows uh, the person marker follows the vowel harmony of the question marker instead of the present continuous suffix okay so if you want to say i am reading a, or not i am reading a book but am i reading a book so how would we correctly make this question sentence actually i'm going to write a few more since this is going to be the practice part is she watching uh, television. So if you can write the Turkish versions of these sentences, I would appreciate it. I will be looking at the comment section. Okay. Are they eating uh, spaghetti? I don't know how to write spaghetti. One second. <laughs> spaghetti. Uh, are you doing... I'm going to check in a moment, just a second. Your homework. And finally, let's say... Uh, to... Let's say is Ahmed going to school? Okay. So I'm checking the chat. So sometimes I'm a bit late with the chat messages. So 
Gohar is the first one with okuyor muyum? Okay. But what am I reading? So there is the object, the direct object, the uh, thing that we're reading missing. So the correct version is from Dimitris. So Dimitris said, bir, okay, is it correct though? Bir kitap okuyor muyum? Okay, Dimitris. So I think you need to practice the present continuous, right? So, Gohar, your question was almost correct, but you were missing the kitap, right? Huh. I think this time Dimitris made the uh, other one correct, but first, look. let's look at the first one. Kitap okuyor muyum. This will be the correct version, right? It's not bir kitap okur muyum. Kitap okuyor muyum. So we don't have to include bir. I mean, there's no mention of whether uh, this uh, verb needed an article or if it's like, like a number. But because in the English there's a book, but it's not, uh, there's no reason to add a definite or indefinite article in Turkish because we don't use it that much. So we can simply, we can actually say bir kitap okuyor muyum, but it's not that natural. It's kitap okuyor muyum, it's better, okay? Okay, let's look at another one from Dimitris. O televizyon izliyor mu? Right? In Turkish, the he, she, it is simply just the o suffix, o personal pronoun. O televizyon izliyor mu? Right? This is the uh, correct version. Okay, what about the other one? Huh, pasta. Actually, in Turkish, we have the word spaghetti. In Turkish, the Turkish word for spaghetti is spaghetti. Uh, I'm just going to check it just in case. If I'm incorrect, yeah, we have another. We have a cognate. This is a, a cognate in Turkish, and we can say spaghetti instead of pasta because the word pasta in Turkish is not the pasta in the Italian version, but the cake, uh, like a birthday cake in Turkish. That's a bit different. <laughs> so if you say I'm eating pasta, pasta yorum to a Turkish person, they might think that you're eating a cake, like a birthday cake or a fruit cake, any kind of cake, and not the pasta that the Italians eat or the spaghetti that the Italians eat. So instead we can say spaghetti. So we can say, onlar spaghetti yiyor mu? Right? This is better. Okay, so onlar pasta Yorlar mı? Ah, okay. So actually, I have also forgot this. Uh, we, the onlar pronoun is a bit strange. We can make it either with the plural suffix and sometimes without the plural suffix. So if we say onlar as a group, as a single group, then we can use it without the plural suffix. But if we were, if we are talking uh, of each of the members in the onlar pronoun as on the they pronoun, then we can add the plural suffix. So onlar spaghetti yor mu or onlar spaghetti yorlar yorlar mu. But it changes. The question particle changes. So you have to be careful with the onlar pronoun. It's one of the uh, annoying pronouns in Turkish. <laughs> okay, let's look at the other one. Dimitris, you're active today. <laughs> Actually, uh, we have only Gohar and Dimitris active, but I think Gohar is either busy, or couldn't write it. So what about this one? So the word for homework in Turkish is ödev. 
alıştırma alıştırma is more exercise so alıştırma is exercise so alıştırma can be used for exercise on a specific topic and it can be it can be used for different meanings alıştırma yapmak it's like an exercise test it's not simply just a homework it can be an exercise on a certain grammar topic so it's a lot better to use ödev for homework so what was our question are you doing your homework uh, so sen okay so Dimitris be sure to look at our lesson on the genitive uh, it's okay Andrew don't worry so be sure to look at our topic on the genitive case and the possessive suffix because the word uh, your homework is a genitive possessive structure right <laughs> so uh, uh, Ra Rachel and uh, Ra Rachel and Hoş geldin. I couldn't correctly read your name. So, Rachelin, your answer is almost correct. But the pronoun is onlar. It's not the onlar, but it's you. So, sen ödevini yapıyor musun? Why is it different? Ödev yapıyor musun? Is like, do you do your homework? <laughs> right? Do you do your homework? Is not uh, completely correct, right? Ödevin. It's your homework, but you also forgot to write uh, for Andrew. You forgot to write the accusative suffix. So, in today's lesson, we're not going to do the case markers yet because the case markers is a pretty detailed lesson and you, I'm probably going to uh, cut it into a few more different parts because yeah, there won't be time to uh, go it in detail. So your homework will be Devin. And are you doing your, if you're doing your homework, are you doing your homework? Send the Devin appearance. Okay, let's look at the final one. Hoş bulduk bu arada. Rush, Rush, Rushalin, Rushalin. <laughs> Russia. Okay, I'll call you Russia. I, I hope to remember it. Hopefully, you will also attend our upcoming YouTube live lessons again. Okay, Russia. So, ah, uh, uh, so let's look at Gohar's. Uh, writing Ahmed okula uh, so going to go is it make right maybe there's a typo I'm, I'm guessing it's a typo instead of a not gidiyor but gidiyor so Ahmed okula gidiyor mu right be careful with the typos but it's okay so this is how we make question sentences. So be sure if you have problems with uh, showing genitive possessive constructions, like I my homework is school, dot, dot, dot, be sure to watch our earlier uh, video of our YouTube live stream. I think it's the first, fourth one or the third one. You can check it out from uh, our YouTube page. Uh, I talked about how to correctly show ownership of Turkish uh, nouns. So be sure to watch it because otherwise you won't be able to correctly use your homework in a sentence. Okay, so now we're going to do something more fun. So I'm not going to talk grammar. Uh, instead, we're going to do some exercises. So first of all, let me share... Uh, one second, I have to change the file. So share, which one? Share, share, share. Where is my PDF file? Okay, 
I think I found it. Angel. <laughs> okay, I found it. Okay. Hopefully you can easily see them. So these are some uh, exercises from the book Yabancı uh, Dilim Türkçe. <laughs> so it's not my book, but I use it a lot in my private lessons. Hopefully you will also uh, have a lot of fun using these exercises in this book. Okay, so here you can see people doing certain things, right? Certain actions. So I want you to uh, try to make the present continuous sentences uh, of the actions that are done in these pictures. So I want you to look at the picture. As you can see, there's an example in number one. It says, O yürüyor. Okay, Ali is doing something, Willy is doing something, the cartel, the eagle is doing something, dot, dot, dot. So I want you to look at all of these and let's do it like this and try to make your own sentences. If you like, you can add some detail, okay? So you don't have to just say that doing this, doing that. Okay, Dimitris, try to make a little more, try to add a little more detail into your sentence. So it's a lot, it's easier to simply just write the conjugation, but you can, if you know how to add, for example, in, on, at, or going to, from, let's see if you can correctly make some interesting sentences. I'm gonna give you a few minutes. So look at the verbs and try to make the conjugation both correctly and try to add a little detail if you know the uh, vocabulary and the grammar. Then I'm going to give some examples. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm going to write the examples in the comment box because when I'm sharing the screen, uh, it disappears if I try to do it differently. Uh, hopefully this won't disappear. Uh, okay, for example, for two, Ali, as Dimitris wrote it. Okay, nice example. Ali, denizde yüzüyor. So, for example, I could make something like this. Ali, İstanbul. Uh, Denizinde yüzüyor. Ali İstanbul Denizi. So do you know the seas of Turkey? Do you know, for example, which sea? What is the name of the sea in Istanbul? <laughs> if you can, then you can make it even more interesting. So Ali Denizde yüzüyor, Russia. Okay, let's look at Dimitris. Veli yolda koşuyor for number three. Veli yolda koşuyor. You can actually make it different. So instead of just saying running, maybe he's doing sports. <laughs> evet. Russia, the sea in Istanbul is Marmara, right? So it's Marmara Denizi. Marmara, so Marmara Denizi, Marmara Sea, right? So this would be the correct way, the Marmara Denizi. Okay, so another word from Dimitris. Let's look at it. Kartal, Çenet, Çenette. So I'm guessing not Çenette, but Çenette. Uh, so Cennet means heaven in Turkish. So there are two words for it actually. Cennet is heaven and Cehennem is hell. So let me write it so this is a nice vocabulary for you to learn. Cennet. So maybe is flying in heaven. But we can also say, for example, if you know how to use spatial postpositions. I actually had a lesson 
on it in the earlier uh, live lesson. You can say uh, Kartal Bulutların Arasında uh, your. I'm going to share your examples, don't worry. I just want to first show this one. Kartal Bulutların Arasında Uçuyor. So the eagle is flying flying in between the clouds in between bulutlar in arasında you need to know the genitive possessive and the spatial postpositions to make such a sentence which i did it in the last lesson okay let's look at uh dimitris the sensor so chauffeur so number five so yepien excel yepien so you know about the duplication uh, derivations of nouns this is really nice. Yep, yen. It's like really extremely new. Uh, I don't know the correct way to say it in English, but in another easy way to say it is basically extremely new, really new car. So is it a car? Is it a bus? I'm not sure. It looks like a car, I think, because it doesn't look like a bus, but maybe it's a bus. I don't know. So sh chauffeur. So chauffeur, not the chauffeur, but chauffeur. Most people... Even Turkish people, Turks, make this mistake. So it's not chauffeur, but chauffeur. Chauffeur yepyeni bir araba sürüyor. Yeah, brand new, right? Uh, so Andrew Kartal. Huh. So the order of the önünde and bulut. So the order, the correct order would be Kartal. Uh, bulutun önünde uçuyor. So let me show that before we move on. Kartal bulutun önünde. So not önünde bulutun, but bulutun önünde. So the spatial postpositions is after the, that. Yeah. Also, Russia eli tepeden aşağı koşuyor. Güzel, çok güzel örnek. Teşekkür ederim. And let's look at another one from Dimitri. So by the way, tepeden aşağı is from top of the hill downwards. So Veli is running from the top to the down of the hill, down the hill basically, okay? And from Dimitris, Ayşe genellikle çok erken uyuyor çünkü ertesi gün okula gitmeli. Okay, so this is a nice... Detailed sentence. So the meli malı is the necessity, the obligation suffix, meaning has to, have to, due to some reasons, obligations. Hopefully we will do a lesson on this one when we move on to more topics. So genellikle is means generally. So it's a adverb of frequency. We have a few uh, vocabulary uh, sheets on the Turkish Holic websites for adverbs of time. I'm going to share the link to them. So I copied the link in the comment section. So you can, if you like, download this vocabulary PDF and use it with you. So you just need to register for a free account. And you can then use more adverbs like Dimitris, genellikle, bazen, hep, Ara sıra, like sometimes, never, always, dot, dot, dot. Çok erken. Çok is also another uh, adverb for showing amount. Of the, the, I forgot the terminological word, but it means a lot. Çok erken diyor. Because, çünkü, ertesi gün, the next day, okula gitmeli. Has, he has, she has to go to school. Okay. So, anything else? One second. Let's look at the next words. So, starting from 7 until 12. So, let's see some more sentences. So, today we have a lot of people who are doing a lot of commenting, writing, so giving me a lot of 
uh, example sentences, which is nice. I really like it. And it's a good way for you to practice your Turkish since I'm here checking your grammar, giving you tips. It's simply uh, similar to a private group lesson. By the way, uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, I am going to start group lessons, my paid group lessons. Okay. Uh, starting. So I'm going to make an announcement soon. Uh, the group lessons will be limited from uh, four to six people. I will talk about the price and the levels for each group lessons are going to be different. There will be the A1 continuing until B2 levels. The pricing will be also explained. It will be really cheap. For example, one uh, uh, pack will be about 12 lessons, but it's going to be really good for you to practice, for you to improve your lessons. I'm going to do an announcement in the YouTube announcement section, the community section, also on our website, on Facebook, and our, if you're also in from the Facebook community group, I'm going to do a big announcement there. So if you're interested, be sure to check out the announcement sections, okay? Okay. So let's continue from where we left off. One second. Murat Er Çalışmazsa Saat dokuzda uyanıyor. So a nice detailed intermediate level sentence from Dimitris. So this is a if conditional sentence. Murat eğer çalışmazsa. If Murat doesn't work. So for example, if it's in the weekend, if he's on the weekend, he saat dokuzda uyanıyor. He wakes up at nine o'clock so the if conditionals i actually have a lesson on the if conditionals in turkish let me copy the link and i think i had yeah conditionals starting from this if you're interested in the if conditionals i copied the link to the free lesson I have on my speaking Turkish for today's lesson. You can check it out in the comment section. Okay, so this is a nice sex, uh, sentence. Thank you, Dimitris. So, Rasha. Murat her gün saat yedide uyanıyor. Çok güzel. Her gün, every day. So, uh, maybe you use some of the adverbs of time from the vocabulary lesson link I sent you. I'm guessing <laughs> it's okay. If you if you knew it, then it's better. If not, that's still a nice sentence. Okay, so we looked at Murat. What about Turgut, Mine, Professor Mahmud, and Shahin? So do you know what kind of actions they're doing here? So there is a showering action, and there is like a man. I think the professor is giving a speech. Mahmoud is an alcoholic. <laughs> I, do, I have a lot of friends who like to drink a lot every day, even in the morning. Maybe they're like Mahmoud. Shahin is falling. Maybe from a really high place. Where is he falling from? I don't know. Maybe from a cliff or from the bed. You can say maybe he's falling from the bed. <laughs> Anything. So let me see your sentences. I don't want to simply give out my sentences. I can, I can give them out, but I want to see you in the sentences. I want to see your sentences. <laughs> okay, Dimitris, today you're pretty active. Thank you very much. So Turgut genelde acele yataktan kalkıyor. Çünkü her zaman geç kalıyor. Okay, so this is also a nice detailed sentence. So... Genelde, I think we used it also in one of your earlier. No, not that was genellikle. Genelde means generally. So it's genellikle and genelde have a really similar meaning. So Turgut generally. Acele. Acele is an adverb. Acele means in a rush. Yataktan kalkmak is to get up from bed. 
And because çünkü every day or every time her zaman geç kalıyor. So geç kalmak to, means to be late. So Turgut generally gets up uh, really quickly from bed because it is always late. Turgut genelde acele yataktan kalkıyor çünkü her zaman geç kalıyor. Okay, let's look at Andrew's sentence. Mine uh, ne yapıyor? Okay, Sondra spor. Ah, okay, I think there's like a word combination or there's like something missing. But let's check it out. So Mine, Sondra, spor. Ah, okay. You're saying after sports, she takes a shower. So we need to use the ablative case marker. Mine, spor, dan, sonra. Duş. So we don't say duş yapmak. We say duş almak. To take. We don't say to do a shower. To take a shower. So it's similar to the English. To take a shower. To, it's not to make a shower. So spordan sonra. So dan sonra. Dan önce. After sports. Before sports. We can say spordan sonra or yemekten sonra e, yemekten sonra kitap okuyorum or kitap okurum spordan sonra duş alıyorum duş alırım so dan sonra means after some action we can say dan önce meaning before a certain action we are going to learn this in the case markers lesson hopefully starting next week So you will see, have a more chance to practice them, okay? Okay, again, Russia, we say duş almak, like this one, duş almak. We don't say duş yapmak. We don't do a uh, shower. We take a shower. Simply, similar to the English version, take a shower. Okay, let's look at the last three, 10, 11, 12 of this lesson. Okay, we're almost coming to the end of today's live stream. I hope you're having fun with these lessons. If you have any suggestions, for example, if you want me to do more explanation, more exercises, or if you want me to play games, or if you want me to, for example, invite you into this live stream and want me to talk with you, you can also give a suggestion. Uh, you can also contact me from Instagram. It's the same, Turkishaholic, at Turkishaholic. Okay. So, Dimitris, let's look at your words. Mine maalesef iki saat uh, duş. I'm guessing duş, not düz, but duş yapıyor. Düz means straight. <laughs> duş yapıyor ve ben tuvalete... Okay, you can actually use... The present continues again for I cannot go. Gidemem is I can't go in general. I'm going to give your example in a second, Latifa, just a second. So we can use I can't do this or he, she does this and that's why I can't do this. So the correct version would be Mine maalesef iki saat duş yapıyor ve ben tuvalete gidemiyorum. Because the action is happening at that moment. But if we were to say, for example, she is doing that every morning, Mine maalesef her gün iki saat duş yapıyor ve ben tuvalete gidemiyorum. Beklemek zorundayım. Or beklemek zorunda kalıyorum. Zorunda kalmak. Let me write the correct version. Uh, one second. Bir saat duş yapıyor ve ben tuvalete gidemiyorum. Beklemek zorundayım. So the correct version would be this one, right? So without mistakes, you can use the potential mood. I can, I cannot. Gitmek, gidebilmek, gidememek. Gidemiyorum. Okay? Be careful with the, some of the grammar mistakes and latifa by the way welcome i think 
you are watching the lesson but it's the first time you're writing something but thank you again for joining the lesson be sure to join a lot don't be scared don't be shy for other people who are also watching this lesson be sure to write sentence even if you make a mistake it's okay don't worry this is a lesson it's not real life i mean it's real life but you don't have to worry about making mistakes i'm here for you i'm the teacher and i will guide you with the corrections anne mutfakta akşam yemeği yapıyor okay we don't have any mother here cooking but it's okay we can still make this sentence it doesn't have to be just from the pictures so my mother is uh, making dinner for me or making dinner in the kitchen mutfakta akşam yemeği yapıyor güzel okay so i think merhaba latifa but be sure to enter our lesson in time next time because you came at the end of our lesson so our live streams are usually around one hour and right now it's at the one hour mark even if you missed the lesson you can watch this lesson as a video after the lesson ends so when this finishes if you cannot make it in time be sure to watch the lesson if you can make it in time i mean i usually give an announcement in the community section saying okay we have another lesson uh, be sure to join the lesson or be sure to click on the uh, create reminder button let's look at dimitri's sentences then i will have to cut uh, our lesson from here okay uh, oops not that one <laughs> so our, our lessons usually start at seven o'clock uh, turkish time gmt plus three every sunday unless there's something happening i usually do it at the same time so don't worry so be sure to check the announcements professor çok konuşuyor ve hepimiz bıkıyoruz bıkmak means to get sick of something to get bored so the professor is speaking a lot and all of us we're all sick of it we got real uh, we got bored of it let's look at russia's then I will have to uh, close the share screen. <laughs> so, sorry about that, but we have to limit it because this is the free version of StreamYard and I won't be able to make another free lesson if we uh, go past the limit. <laughs> okay. Professor'un yeni... Uh, heh, Professor yeni araştırmasını üniversitede açıklıyor. So there's a small mistake here. Professor yeni araştırmasını üniversitede açıklıyor. So this will be the correct version. Profesör Profesör yeni araştırmasını yeni araştırması is a possessive compound or actually it's not a possessive compound. Profesörün yeni araştırması. So depending on the structure sometimes it's a possessive compound and sometimes it's a genitive possessive structure. Be sure to check out our lessons on genitive and the possessive suffix okay and last of all let's look at dimitris then i'm gonna uh, finish our lesson for today mahmut hem içkiler içiyor hem de kumar oynuyor hem hem de he's doing the, both, both that and that hem hem so hem içki içiyor so we don't say içkiler we say içki içiyor hem de kumar oynuyor okay everyone so we came to the end of today's lesson so it's been one hour thank you again for everyone thank you again for joining today's lesson so the lessons are usually at 19 gmt uh, plus three time so turkish time and usually it's on sunday so the lessons are usually always at the same time okay so today we had a lesson next sunday so next sunday is the 6th of march the 6th of march hopefully we will have another lesson starting at seven o'clock turkish time gmt plus three or utc i don't know what it is, whatever it is be sure to check the time and see if it suits your time i mean if there's a miss if there's a if there are a lot of people saying okay can we change the time and the date to this and that i will try to change it but i have to also fit it into my schedule 
I have private lessons. I have to work on the website. And this is just an extra, but I still want to give more and more to everyone because I want people to speak more Turkish. I want to help you out. Okay, so be sure to join our next lesson on the 6th, 6th of March at 7 o'clock GMT plus 3 time. Teşekkür ederim. Herkese teşekkür ederim. Thank you everyone for joining this lesson. Thank you, Dimitris, Rasha, Goran, uh, Latifa, anyone else that I didn't say. Uh, let me check. So there are a lot of uh, Andrew and anyone else? Yeah, I think so. I think not many people, but <laughs> it's still better than uh, zero people. Thank you, everyone. I, if I forget to say your name, sorry about that. I couldn't check it. I can see it. But thank you again for joining. Haftaya görüşürüz. Haftaya görüşürüz arkadaşlar. Yes, be sure to be on this time, in, the, in this time, okay? 19. Görüşürüz. İyi akşamlar.